Hi, this is Jamie with EvansvilleKnife.com, and we are here today with Contessa and Jay Scott with the Evansville Fire family. Um, so, tell us, guys, how did, uh, how did the whole idea of having fire performers and fire teachers down on the river get started in the first place? Well, the first day was April 1st, and we weren't even at the monument at the time. We were on the grass area by the monument. And uh, just a bunch of friends that just got together and was like, hey, let's spin some fire. And the first night was maybe 25 people, just word of mouth. And then we decided, hey, let's do it Thursday. Okay, we did it Thursday. Then we did it again Sunday. And it just got bigger. Mm -hmm. Just got bigger and bigger. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, we were looking for a while to find other uh, fire performers around the area. Um, maybe that's we're looking for right about maybe and a half trying to find Almost everyone, two years, yeah. and just happened across a few other people with it. Um, it was kind of one of those looking for all, looking for a while, never really had much for it, and then it happened. Everyone got together, and then it just blew up. Like she said, the first show was maybe 25 to 50 people word of mouth, and then it just kept getting bigger. Like everyone started finding out, people walking by, people telling everybody about it, photos getting posted up, and then it's just amassed. Awesome. So how did you guys? Uh, what was the decision to, to use the Four Freedoms Monument as your performance spot? Like, why, why did you guys pick that place? Well, it's the heart of downtown. It's the riverfront. Perfect sunset. And it, it was just the perfect spot. I mean, and especially what it stands for in Evansville, you know. It's the Four Freedoms. I mean, it's perfect. Also, one great part about it, too, is that with it being a concrete pad out there, it worked with us, with the uh, Parks Department and everything. It gave us a safe place to perform at. Didn't have to worry about a lot of things, you know, catching fire there. It was a good, safe ground to put it on, and everyone knows where it's at. They walk by it, and although it's kind of hard on the back end for people to kind of come up and really watch as much, it gives a good, rounded area for people to sit back and watch. It kind of is its own little outdoor venue, its own little stadium. Right on. So you guys have had um, some local bands and some DJs down there uh, playing with you guys, and that's something that's kind of grown and gotten to be more of a big deal, too. How, um, how did you end up having the live musicians come down there? How did that get started? Tell us about that. Well, the first round of music, whenever we first had it set up, was uh, an iPod and a pair of speakers. Like, <laughs> little, pair of little computer speakers I had out there. And uh, then um, Victor Burkle had gotten a hold, and he came out and brought one of his... Um, just taller speakers gave us a little more sound for it. Just kind of keep growing, getting more equipment into it. Uh, from that point, he started speaking about getting a DJ to come out there with it. And that's whenever our first DJ that came out was DJ Paul. Uh, he came out and started just putting the music up and brought all his equipment. And the first weekend he came up, we're used to having these small little bits of equipment for it. And he comes in and has these stacks. I mean, he comes in with oh, a wow. van full <laughs> and sets up a mini stage inside there. And we're just thinking, oh, this is epic. So people can hear it going all around. And then more musicians started coming out there for it with live bands. Um, people that Victor had worked with started coming out. We started kind of blending it together. We had the DJs and then the live bands. And sometimes they would kind of go at the same time and work off each other. And then sometimes we would just have it split. And the more people heard about it, we started getting questions from people. Hey, you know, how can we come out there and play? We want to come out here. Who's doing this weekend? And it really made an interest for them. Yeah, cool. getting two to beat out there. Mm -hmm. um, they were awesome. They're one of the first bands, guys, that came out and was like, hey, can we jam with you guys? And Kick Hermatic, they're out almost every week. Before we had the actual big DJ system, uh, we had just friends bringing uh, hand drums and guitars and doing it that way because the little speakers weren't loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see how the little speakers would be just about shot by the time you got it up to the volume that you needed. Yeah. <laughs> so you got, you said Kid Chromatic, and what were the other bands? Two to be. Right on. Very cool. Um, so I know that you guys uh, were at the, the Homegrown Music Festival out of the Engelbreck Orchard a couple of weeks ago, and that was, that was awesome. Are you guys available for other events? Can people, like, call you up and book you to do Definitely. stuff like that? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, on the Facebook page, it's uh, Evansville Fire Performers, if you look it up on Facebook. Um, Evansville Fire Family on MySpace. Uh, follow, follow us on Twitter, it's Evil Fire Fam. Mm -hmm. and just all one word there, E-V-I-L-L-E. Uh, on the Facebook page, there's a contact, our email address, uh, phone number's up there as well. Um, I think I've actually changed that one up. Yeah, I did change that one. <laughs> the old number is no longer in service. So the new number, the, the proper contact number is there. People try to call the old one. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> New one's there. Give us a ring back on that one. But we are bookable for really any kind of level of things. Uh, we've done small birthday party things up to you know, shows and festivals like that one. So just whatever kind of scale you're looking for, from big to small, we can accommodate for it. And we love doing it. We love everything. Birthday parties, small family events, weddings, bar mitzvahs. You know, <laughs> All right, I just have one more, one last question for you guys today. Thank you so much for coming out and talking with us. Um, yeah. The weather's getting colder. And uh, the nights are coming sooner, it's sad. So how much longer this year are you guys going to be out there? And uh, when do you kind of plan on getting started again in the spring? Well, <laughs> okay, so we have one more week at the Four Freedom Monuments. And then we're doing the Asylum Haunted House as our last hurrah. But we're going to try to sneak in a snow burn so we have the fire and ice. Um, I think this this one, of course, it's going to be at the Four Freedom Monuments. Um, it's going to be more of a word of mouth because, I, I don't know, it's just a lot more fun when it's like, hey, there's going to be a fire show tonight. So we're definitely going to do that, hopefully, if we can get everybody together on the perfect snow. And then um, I, I think with April 3rd, we're going to do uh, next season because we actually started on April 4th. So it's the first Sunday of April, which was last year was the fourth. So, yeah. Right. You guys can have an anniversary bash out there. Yeah. Right? yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks again for coming out today and, and talking with us. Oh, thank you for having us. I'm glad to be up on this one. So. All right.